So we're going to explore the lesson of uniform circular motion. Now from the definition uniform circular motion, it means we're going to go with a constant velocity around a fixed point, which is located at a distance r, which is the radius of a circle and the velocity vector would be pointing this way let's say and we are rot rotating around the specific point in a uniform manner and once we say the word uniform it means we are maintaining the same speed and the velocity vector for the uniform circular motion would be tangent to this trajectory or to the path what, what do we mean by tangent it means it touches at exactly one point the velocity vector will be touching the circular path at exactly one point. However, since the velocity is made up of magnitude and direction because it's a vector. So even though the magnitude is the same, the direction is changing. So if the direction is changing, it means the velocity is changing. And once we have any change in velocity, whether magnitude or direction-wise, we're going to expect the presence of acceleration. So you might ask yourself, we're going in a uniform circular way, circular fashion, and the direction for these velocity vectors, we're having the same magnitude of the velocity. However, the direction is changing. So where could this acceleration vector be? This is what we call as the centripetal acceleration which is the acceleration towards the center of the following motion which points this way so if I take the velocity vector at any point in this motion you'll notice that the vector is a tangent however the acceleration is pointing towards the center of this movement at any single point in time where they are forming literally 90 degrees with respect one to another so the velocity vector is at 90 degrees with the acceleration vector in this case and the main reason why do we have this acceleration in the first place is because the velocity vector is changing directions even though the magnitude is the same and if we want to calculate the centripetal acceleration, we're able to do so with the following formula, where we have the acceleration given with the subscript C to represent the centripetal acceleration, which equals to the velocity squared over the distance from the center of rotation, which is R. Velocity is measured in meters per second. The radius is in meters and the acceleration is in meters per second squared. So once you do have the velocity given to you, along with the distance from the rotation, you are able to calculate the centripetal acceleration, which leads us to the following point. Since we have an acceleration, we're going to be under the influence of a Newton's second law, which is F equals to MA. The net force is the result of the mass multiplied by the acceleration. And since we have a centripetal acceleration, we're going to be having what we call as the centripetal force, which is F, again with a small subscript C, equals to the mass multiplied by the centripetal acceleration. Now, you'll notice that is the same formula, but it's applied to a specific case, which is the uniform circular motion. So let's say we do have an example. I have a rock with a mass of one kilogram. It's spinning in a uniform circular motion around a fixed center at a distance of three meters which is the radius and the velocity is basically three meters per second if we want to find the centripetal acceleration the formula would be a equals to v squared over r which equals to 
3 squared over 3, which is 9 over 3, which equals to 3 meters per second square. So this is the value for the centripetal acceleration. Now I'm going to transition to calculating the centripetal force. Fc equals to the mass multiplied by the centripetal acceleration, where the mass is 1 kilograms, multiplied by 3, which equals to 3 newtons. So you notice, as soon as we were able to calculate the centripetal acceleration, we are able to apply Newton's law to get to the centripetal force. So let's have a quick recap on the main points that we have covered. We started off by defining the uniform circular motion, which is the motion going around a fixed point within a certain radius at a uniform velocity. And when we say uniform velocity, it means the magnitude is constant. However, the direction is changing, which led to the acceleration, which is defined as the centripetal acceleration. And the centripetal acceleration could be calculated by the following formula. A equals to V squared over R, where V is the velocity in meters per second, R, and R is the distance from the center of rotation, where we call this as the axis of rotation. Then we transition to Newton's second law, which is F equals to MA, and we have applied it to the uniform circular motion, where we're able to calculate the centripetal force. And this centripetal force, which is the force acting towards the center of rotation in the same direction as the centripetal acceleration. So this is going to be FC, which is in the same direction of AC. So both of them, they are in the same line in this case. Then we had a small example where we have illustrated the application for calculating the centripetal acceleration 